All right. So, uh, sorry. sorry, Professor, I just have a ahead. question. Um, do you think maybe in this lecture, you could maybe go over the concept of like nameless objects again with like, Oh yeah. I think I saw on the, on the notes or something like they did like, um, uh, target of this equals like to a constructor. A, and I'm like, why? Yeah. I thought we're not. Remember, to remember I, I, I mentioned that hmm. in class and I say, you will see people do this, but don't do it now until hmm. Uh, did did I did, was it your class that I mentioned you will see people do that I'll explain it I'm gonna bring up the container I'm gonna explain using that but what I'm saying is that you will see people do that don't do it until you know why is it done and if it's good or not so I'll talk about it today definitely absolutely no problem I'll, I'll explain okay. it right now okay Ooh, thank so you. no problem so uh, so I wanted to say if they have any questions about constructors and destructors and one came up so I'm gonna answer that right now and then we're gonna contain continue so that's the container we created we had the fault constructor we have a container and a, a single argument constructor and a three argument constructor and in the constructor of uh, the container we uh, before before doing that is the font visible to everyone uh, can uh, let me like or you need it bigger is it visible is it good only one person is replying two three come on reply you can do it <coughs> or if you're not replying activate your microphone or say it in a chat or something uh, if you are full screen and you won't see it anyways so uh, the rest are quiet and probably just logged in I don't know 30% 30, 30 of the students are actually replying right now. Okay, are you there? Okay, I like that better. Okay, good. Good. Say it, James and D, you are not replying. Anyways, so let's continue. So um, let's split the window and take a look at uh, exactly what's going on in here so we created a, a container and we created an init function for it and an init function for setting up the uh, the the name to dynamically and the init function sets everything to zero and the init function for the uh, what should we call it the um, the name of the container uh, the, the the name uh, the name of the content of the container is dynamically allocating something and putting it over there and so on and so forth so we know all these things now let's answer uh, uh, peter's question so you you see peter right now and uh, uh, have your microphone active so 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 we can uh, i uh, i'll make sure that i'm not going to talk gobbledygook and and we'll, we'll actually go through what we wanted to talk about so um in here we have uh, and in it and our initialization first sets everything to zero and then after that uh, um, sets uh, whatever is supposed to be set right at this moment as you see and I gave an example for the initialization area which is um, redundant at the moment because it's going to set it to 100 and then it in it is going to set it to to zero so that's going to be gone I'm going to remove it because it just doesn't make sense I'll remove that one but um, let's say I did not want to reuse my code and I'm a bad programmer and I want to actually do this thing manually inside the, the constructor. So this is what I do. Okay. So uh, can anybody tell, like Peter, do you, what, is the, what is wrong with what I've done right now? Like what is missing in here in this constructor? Can you see? Um, let me see. So it is setting, like, just to lead you towards the to the answer. This constructor is setting the setting the content to the value that it is. But how about these? It, they haven't been initialized. They haven't yet. been initialized, right? So yeah. some people, but some programmers, they say, "I want to reuse my constructor," but I know I cannot call it. So what do I do? I'm going to write this. Okay, now let's analyze and see what happens. I'm going to actually walk through it and show you why we shouldn't do this. 
okay so I'm gonna come to this PRG thingy over here include the container by the way you are, um, I am starting to uh, give feedback on workshops and putting the marks on so you will get you will get emails from me uh, possibly email from me uh, with a link in it that tells what is wrong with your code if what's wrong with your code is not that bad I'm not gonna reduce mark it's just keep keep it as a warning and later if if you repeat mis uh, repeat doing mistakes any mistake that is mentioned here so if you go to the notes I have to mention this sorry Peter I just had to interrupt this because I remembered I have to mention it before we continue so when you go okay. to um, notes in the notes there is marking in this marking it says what is wrong what is bad to do these are throughout semesters feedbacks that I gave to students based on the code that you are writing and right off the bat somebody who submitted everything perfectly did the first three in the first thing that it did which means used break to to uh, to stop a loop uh, put the custom header files before the library header files and uh, call the C++ C, C header file instead of C++ header file so 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 the first problem was this like they did this and uh, when they were using when they were actually uh, issuing when they were including string header file they included string header file like this okay you're not supposed to so these are the things that uh, the, the messages you're gonna get from me consider these as warnings if it's not that bad but if I see you did something horrible then you may lose 5% or 10% on what you have done again you all you need to do is to when uh, when you receive the email so you're gonna see only for example this one what you need to do click on CH it brings you over here and tells you what is wrong what needs to be done so this is a problematic code and this is the correct way of writing it it tells you what is wrong and how it can be fixed the code is not yours it's the same mistake that you made in your code uh, uh, does, does that is we understand what happened do you, are, are we okay with this so whenever you have a chance go through these this page the marking that I have and read it as a chapter of the book that you need to understand go through the code one by one see what the problem is and how it's fixed from this you learn how you're supposed to actually code and this is actually one from the tag list so so uh, the the programmer who wrote this in the student who wrote this thing as you see it has a return statement halfway through the the function which means your function now has two points of return which was wrong and I say the fix is either this or that so I'll give you the fix so you will see you cannot have multiple return statements in a function anyways so uh, let's continue now I'm gonna walk through this the one that I have written in here which I actually use this is equal to container to see what happens so in here I'm gonna create a container uh, uh, using namespace stds and I'm gonna create a container and this container C will have water in it okay that's that and I want to see how it's going to work out and let's uh, do a C dot display is it a C dot display C dot display uh, and probably an NL I can do so let's just run through it and see what happens I'm gonna run the program now I want you to pay attention to what's happening so um, let's put this one at left and this one at right also bring this one over here to see how things are happening so it wants to create the uh, the container obviously the one argument constructor will be called so it goes to one argument constructor then it comes to one argument constructor and I want your attention in here extremely important sure. it comes to the one uh, argument constructor it says create a temporary nameless object so it goes now to the constraint it's not calling a constructor an object is being created now another container is being created now using the container uh, 
so that using the, the default constructor it goes over there it initializes that object that name is nameless object to all zeros then it comes over here it says blindly copy the object at right over me because this object has all its properties set to zero all the property of my object will be set to zero too do we understand this yeah okay so but so what's the problem with this the problem is this take a look i'm going to press f11 to see what happens next so first it's going to put everything in in the, in that one and then see what happens it comes to destructor what is being destroyed in here peter the nameless object the nameless object is destroyed obviously mission accomplished if i look at this everything is null there and then i continue with the rest of this stuff so this works why don't i just use it the reason is that for one simple single for one simple function call that you could have had instead of one simple function call you are requesting the compiler to create an object and all its resources do something for it and then destroy it just because you didn't want to set three arguments to a value and that's expensive you are wasting too much time does that so make it's sense? Just like, yeah so it's like creating an object within like another object like you're you're trying to make one object but you've made like two like a temporary second one kind of thing exactly and, no and yeah and you, okay. you create it and you uh, and as you see the object that's created at line 11 and dies at line 11 and a half i could just simply put an init over here and be done with it why do i do that because that's why i always say if you want to reuse your uh, if you want to reuse the code inside your constructor, put the code in a private function called the private function instead. Does that Got make it. sense? Okay. Yeah, that, that makes sense. All right, perfect. So I'm just going to put this back to what it was because that's an ugly thing and I don't want it to happen. Go control Z. Yeah, I don't want that. Yeah, uh, and uh, somebody's reading the notes. Thank you very much. All right. So, uh, any other question about uh, constructors here? Somebody said no in the other one, and I said, uh, "Are we okay with says Somebody said no. Uh, who the one who said no? What? Uh, what was wrong? What was the? Somebody said no. Okay. No. Okay. Anyways. So, uh, are we, uh, any questions, any other questions about constructors before we continue? All right. So, and if you have a question, David, go ahead. Sorry, I pushed, I pushed the wrong button. That's, Sorry. That's very okay. No problem. Uh, you answered, so you're my hero. That's okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> okay. All right, so now that we have this, let's begin. Let's uh, save the container, be done with it. <clears throat> so because we want to learn operator overloading, we talked about it last time, but because we want to learn operating overloading, what I'm going to do over here is to analyze and see what type of operator we have, what is the lingo of operator overloading, what are the terms and things that we use for operator overloading, and all the good stuff about it. And by the way, I forgot to show myself here. There you go. I'm back. Oh, let me just, just turn off that stripe of light. Hold on. Okay, so, so uh, I'm going to create a new item over here, add a new item, and I'm going to put it a text file in here, so utility text, and in here I'm going to put operators.txt, okay, and add. Then we had a num that we created last time. I'm going to bring that num up, the, the function that we have. So add uh, existing item, uh, the num 
I remember that that num didn't work in class for some reason it was giving us error it couldn't compile and couldn't recognize stuff so I had to do it in one file something went really fishy so now we have a num value and display let me see if the num works so in here I'm going to include num we don't need the container so that's the container main so a dot contain a uh, dash container main dot cpp um, let's start up another one and this one we're going to deal with num all right let's make it nice so this num thingy that we have i am going to say if not define uh, sdds num h and create the number the reason i'm doing this is that uh, as i am explaining as i am explaining what uh, operators are i'm going to give you examples live as we are going through it so that's going to hopefully make things understandable so uh what the devil is this include doing over here um x comes up all right and we are in namespace sdds save and we're gonna come over here and we're gonna say namespace stds and put the num in there so now we have the number we have a display for the number so i'll create the number over here num n is equal to 200 and n dot display going to new line and oh no we need uh, to say using namespace std that's better one more time so that's going to show 200. Um, one more time let's take a look at num i'm going to look at num in uh, side by side over here so let's split the windows so uh, that's num.cpp and that's uh, num.h as we see i have a class number it has a value in it and that value is being set to some value that is coming in so this class encapsulates a number and it's just for uh, example purposes and as i mentioned and you have seen it many times i am creating a display function that receives an o, o stream reference that is defaulted by c out and returns the reference of o stream displaying it and it displays the value of the number are we okay with the number <laughs> all right so now that we are that we are okay with number let's actually come over here and start analyzing operators so what are operators and uh, how do they work we uh, the operators are essentially uh, categorized in two different ways so we'll first talking about what operators are and then and then what how they are categorized and then after that we are going to uh, discuss how we can actually overload it so we have two types of operators we have unary operators and binary operators but before we do anything operators we need to understand what an operator is and how does how is it referred to so an operator is essentially uh, 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 a sign that you put between two operands and it does something the two to 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 the two operands or a single operand and returns a value accordingly so you have to, you can essentially say a plus b so in here plus is an operator a is an operand b is an operand so so to to explain what these things are a is left operand operand B is, uh, let's actually do it like this. And B is right operand. And plus is uh, the operator. Are we okay with this uh, terminology? 
All right. S and also, so this is essentially a binary operator that we have. Binary operator. Okay. Now we have unary operators. We have unary operators. Unary that they work like this. Plus B. Okay. So this unary operators for this unary operator obviously or plus A. Let's put it like this. A. Okay. A is the operand. There is no operand, operand. There is no left and right and plus is the operator. Are we okay with this one? All right. Now we need to realize that in C++ we have only in C++. So this operators that you see are math operators. But in only in C++, so I'm going to say only in C++, we have a weird type of uh, unary operator that has post. So this is unary operator, and I'm going to put over here prefix. Okay, Th so the first two is what you have in math. Okay, the second one is in C++, which is crazy. So in C++, you go C uh, A uh, minus minus, or you go B plus plus. You do stuff like this. In this case, I'm going to put over here plus plus. In this case, again, uh, it's exactly the same way. So uh, uh, I'm going to write it like this. I'm going to say uh, A is the operand, and plus plus is the operator. Are we okay with this? All right. So these are unary operators in C++, which uh, is our interest, of course, and we call this postfix. Okay? The, there, there is no difference between a postfix and a prefix operator, and the good news is that prefix operators are only two we do pre uh, postfix operators we don't have any other ones it's it's this one and this one that's it we don't have anything else so b is the operator uh, operand and minus minus is the operator okay so that's only in c++ and we have only these two postfix there is no other postfix operator do we understand this all right okay uh shall you said no oh uh, i confused the uh, which uh, subtract uh, subtract mean I, I know plus 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 adds one to a correct yeah that reduces mm -hmm. reduces by one so if a is in here 10 it becomes 12 11 if it's 10 becomes 9. if uh, if it's zero what what can I lead if it's it becomes minus one it's you don't you don't if like, i have a question so if B is zero, zero and I have yeah. A is equal to B minus one, do you know this? I don't know. Do you, do you have any problem with this? B minus one? Yeah, I, I don't know. Yeah. What is the value of A after this? Line 24, what is the value of A after this? Are you? With I, I don't know. It's minus one. Because I really don't have uh, minus one. You don't have minus one. Why not? Yes, because this is. Uh, I think it's it's a structure. Structure is don't have minus one. 
What structure? I'm talking about basic operations. What structure? Whoa, okay, okay, thank you. Oh, I'm confused. A and B, what structure? Okay, A is, okay, uh, shall. A and yeah. B are just names, X and Y, alpha and omega. They are just names. Now, oh, okay. examples of A and plus B could be this. One plus two. Okay, you, I, I, I know, I know. Okay, so sorry, and, sorry. so okay, so <laughs> all right. Yeah. So don't be confused. We are just we are just explaining how operators are. That's it. We are not saying A and B are structures. And by the way, let's say B is a structure. Are you with me? Are you with me? Yeah. Okay. Let's say B is a structure. And the structure is number of people in a lineup. Okay. So I have a structure that holds people in a lineup. My structure is a class that holds the people standing for coffee and Tim Hortons. If I do minus minus, what does it mean? Maybe it means I'm reducing the lineup by one person. I'm serving a person. And plus plus could mean somebody just came to the lineup to buy coffee. So you can make it mean anything. It's not like what does it mean minus minus. Minus minus means if B is a parking, minus minus means one car left out. out get out, got out of the parking. And plus plus means one, one car was parked in the parking. Am I making sense? Does it make sense? Yeah, I, I know. You know what I mean? Like, it, let's let's say I have, uh, um, I let's say we have a, a what shall we call it? Uh, one of those uh, vending machines that you buy coke from or you buy water from. Okay, if B is a vending machine, B minus minus, it means it dropped a water out. And plus plus, it means you put a water inside so the customer can buy it. So as you see, you can define what whatever a, a, an operator is. It doesn't matter. Got it? Yeah. All right. Okay, good. All right, so now let's continue. But these things, they don't mean anything. A and B are just operands. I'm, I'm explaining if you see. So essentially, I should have said this. If I say X, B, Y, X is left operand, at sign is operator, and Y is right operand. Are we good, everyone? Everybody's okay? All right. Okay, good. So, now, these are with respect of operators and how they how they work and what they are so i have i have pre i have binary operators i have unary operators and i have unary operators that are postfix so these are what the operators look like when you are actually using them as you see for example in here can you tell me what type of an operator is the insertion operator over here please tell me what type of an operator is the insertion operator over here <laughs> Three people replied, they're all, the rest are quiet. I said, what kind of an operator? Somebody's telling me it is in session operator. Another person is telling me it's an O stream. I said, what kind? We just taught three types of operator, binary, unary, and unary postfix. We have three types of operator. Tell me which one is this? Is it a binary operator, unary, unary prefix, or unary postfix? Answer again. Okay. I have this operator that I'm highlighting. This operator. I am asking, is this, let me just do it this way.
Okay, so regarding this operator, I'm, I'm, I'm issuing a quiz right now, and I want you to answer to me what it is. Everybody, if you're full screen, get off full screen and see what is the, and tell me what is the answer. Regarding to this operator over here, this operator is... Sayyid Khan, Xiao Gao, Rhythm, James, Elizabeth, okay, four of you are not here, so I don't know why you are even in class, but anyways, so, um, some person said, um, okay, so, just to tell you what happens. Uh, mo most of you said binary operator, which is perfectly correct. Some of you said unary operator, which I have no idea why. Unary? If it was unary, it should have been this. If you write it like this, it's unary. Or if it was this. The compiler doesn't even let me do it. These are unary operators. This is a binary operator, like this plus. It has a left one and a right one. Two things, at left and right, so it's a binary operator. And one person said, this is not an operator. What are you talking about? It is an operator. We just explained what it is in here. Operator is a sign you put between two things. It does something in the here. Now, so let, let's understand. Now I'm going to uh, test it again. So another question again. Is this, uh, what, is, what type of operator is this? Is it an output? So I want to know what is this, the highlighted one over here, the assignment between value, what is it? I am I'm baffled with some of the answers. It's amazing. Okay. Um, again, most of you said binary, which is perfect. I have an operator. I have two things at left and right. It's binary. Two people said, this is not an operator. Again, I don't understand. We just mentioned, we have a sign in the middle, two things around it. It's an operator in the middle. Now, the next thing, uh, and somebody said, it's a unary postfix. If it was unary postfix, it was this, m value semicolon, done. This is a unary postfix. If it was unary prefix, it was this, which is not. So this is a, a binary operator. Okay, that's it. Next one. Next one, let me see what do I have in here. I don't have anything in here. So let's, let's put it in here. Now, if I say over here, um, if I have this based on what I said, I have a knot over here. What is this knot in here? Okay. Um, I have, again, I am, yeah. So, uh, some people are saying binary. Why you are saying binary? Do you see an operand at left side? If I ask what is assignment, yes, assignment is a binary one. But do you see anything at left side or not? 
So no, not is a unary operator. Is it coming before the operand? Yes, so it's prefix operator. And why do you even think that this is not an operator? Of course it's an operator, okay? So first of all, this is not binary because there is one thing, there is nothing yet left over here, okay? And uh, uh, it is a prefix because it comes before it. Now, if I do like this, then this is obvious. What is this minus minus here? Unary postfix, perfect. Somebody said binary, kill me now. Why binary? Do you see anything at right side of it? And I just mentioned we have only two operators in C++ language that are unary post uh, unary postfix plus plus and minus minus. That's it. And yeah, it's not binary, people. It is not binary. That's not right. Okay. So another one. What is this one? This operator. What is this? Okay, unary prefix. Perfect. Good. And somebody said this is not an operator. <sighs> Are you just trying to pull my leg over here saying <laughs> I don't, don't understand? I'm talking about operators. These are all operators. The This is not an operator. It's not an answer. And some people just answer it. Anyway, so the other thing. Now, let's see. Um, if I have over here A is set to B plus um, B C, okay? So, what is this uh, divide equal? Okay, one person said unary postfix. Everybody said binary, which is perfectly correct. One person said unary postfix that I do not understand again why. Unary postfix, it means it has to be like this. A is set to B. If it was like this, then this was unary postfix. And we just said unary postfix are only two. There is no other unary postfix operators other than minus minus and plus plus. Nothing. Only these two can be unary postfix. Only these two. There are no other unary postfix operators anywhere in the world. So that cannot be the answer. Now, one more time. So, what is this one? The assignment over here. I'm, uh, everybody said binary, which is correct. One person says unary pre prefix. Another person said unary postfix. I just said we have only two operators that can be unary postfix. Minus, minus, plus, plus. Nothing else can be unary postfix. So assignment is not unary postfix. And it's not unary. This is one op operand. This is another operand. There are two operands over here. So it's binary. Okay, so these are the things that uh, I'm going through. Let me just ask one more question over here. What is plus plus in here? Everybody said unary prefix, perfectly correct. Four people said unary postfix. Plus, plus, and minus can be. They are, they are all the only two operators that can be postfix. But if they are coming before, then they become prefix. They are before, pre. So if the two 
the plus plus operator comes before something, it becomes prefix. Now, if I have it like this, now this is post. So this is unary prefix, and this one is unary postfix. Are we okay with this? All right. Prefix, not like that, not P-R-I. Pre, prefix. Okay, so anyways, let's get out, get, 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 get the heck out of here. Now I'm going to do more, more analysis over here, okay? Uh, so, so this was regarding the signature of bi uh, operators. I can have either binary operator, a unary operator, or unary postfix operator. They can only be, uh, they can only be um, uh, plus plus or minus minus. So let me just do it like this. So you know that this is a prefix. Okay. It's the same thing as the other one. Okay, so that's operator, like unary operator and unary operator postfix. All right. Now, another fee, another thing that we need to know about operators. So some operators may have side effect. When I say side effect is that when you write a function, uh, an operator like this, if I say integer a, b, and c, no matter what's inside, if I say a, a is equal to b plus c, will the value of b or c change after line 27? Will the value of B or C change after line 27? B or C, I didn't say A. Okay, this is scary. Uh, people, this is basic elementary school math a is equal to a is equal to b plus c b plus c does not change b and c don't change this is elementary math this is like grade one math please we are in college b and c will not change a will change will be the sum of b and c but b and c will not change please okay uh, this is elementary school math okay now, question, if I say A is equal to B minus C, will B or C change? Perfect. It won't change. That's perfectly good. Now, this is a tricky one. Now, if I say A is equal to B plus equal C, Will B or C change after this? Obviously, yes. So now we understand plus equal in this case has side effect. Plus in this case. does not have side effect. So the correct way of mentioning it is that plus with two integer operands operands does not have side effect. plus equal with two integer operands does have side effect. 
Do we understand what is the meaning of side effect? Okay. Uh, if you said no, please uh, tell me what if, uh, what is the like uh, what you don't understand about side effects so I can explain it. You said no. Please explain why not. State your question so I can actually answer. Okay, I want to ask you something. Please, if you say no, immediately tell me why so I can actually... Okay. Answer is, so it is not coming. So, anyways, so that's uh, side effect. We need to understand what side effect is, and that's it. So, <clears throat> These are operators and what they are and what they do. So with respect to math, okay? So with respect to math, we talk about operators and the operators that we have over here uh, uh, are um, they, ha they are either binary or unary and they either have side effect or not side effect. So these are the things that uh, we uh, need to know. Now, with to implement operators with uh, um, in C++, um, this is what we do. So binary operators. So how to overload binary operators in C++, C++ as a member. So as a member, if you want to overload a binary operator to work with two classes, this is how it's supposed to work. So I'm going to say over here, class A, now shall, now this is a class, okay? It's not uh, uh, a, a primitive value, sorry, a type. It could be primitive or not primitive. So I'm going to call it type A type B okay so it could be a class or not a class okay as a member if we have a member then the left operand must be a class so in here I'm gonna say class in when I say and I'm so I'm gonna say in here as an explanation a type may be a class or a primitive uh, type can anybody tell me what is a primitive type? Anyone? Like an int, a double. Yeah, exactly. Flip. Primitive. Yeah, it's it's something that comes with the language, and uh, it you cannot break it into more pieces. Okay, but a class is a compound uh, type that has many pieces, had many parts. Anyways, so if you want to overload binary, there are two ways. As a member or as a class okay so so as a member or as a helper so in here I'm gonna show you as a member if we are doing it as a member this is how it's supposed to be so it's gonna be a member of class A so so let's say if I have something like this I'm gonna say over here class A type B type C okay so a type may be a class or a primitive type but a is a class so if you want to have it a member it must be a member so uh, uh, so if I have something like this uh, B is equal to uh, or I'm gonna say C is equal to a operator B please note at sign is not an operator you cannot overload it it's not a defined operator in c++ to see what operators are in c++ go to a, to go either to, to notes or simply over here say list of operators operators in c++ okay and you can actually see what the operators in in c++ is 
addition, yada, 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 and you can go through it. It's going to explain exactly what the operators are and everything. So go through some site and find out what Wikipedia actually would be a nice thing, or C++.com is a nice one too. So you can go through all the operators and see what they are and, uh, and see how they work. It explains everything with the list and everything. And some of the operators, um, um, so, uh, and again, uh, you will see that not all of our operators can be overloaded, but most of them can. But anyways, so how to overload the uh, overload binary operators in C++? Assuming if at sign is an operator, but at sign is not. You cannot, but I'm using it as a figure. So it could replace with any operator that is binary. Any binary operator, it, it represents that one. The implementation of it will be A, operator at sign that receives uh, a type B okay so let's actually um, class A uh, class A type B, type C, I'm going to do it like, so I'm going to say class A, then I'm going to say A, A, type B, B, type C, C. It's better to put it like this. So class A, so now in here, if I have C is equal to A, at sign, B, there you go. Class A is the owner, type B. Right, uh, right operand is here and what it returns is type C okay so this is the general format for it so when you have a class A and you instantiate that class to a value and then to a, to a, to a, to, a, to an object then you have type B or C. These could be classes or regular variables it doesn't matter primitive or non primitive if you want to overload it as a uh, um, member function this is how it is okay so as a member function it's like that as a non-member function as a non-member function it is something like this so you're gonna have so this is as a non-member which we call it helper function it's going to be implemented as type c operator at sign a left operand type b right operand and that's that in here, I'm going to say this is the left operand. So that's the formula for it. If you want to overload an operator to work with these type of things, that's the formula for it. Use this formula and you can put it for everything. So let's actually take it to num. So let's say I want to have a plus operator uh, to a plus operator to work with num. If I want to do that as a member, how do I do it? Let's split the window. Split the window to left and right. There we go. So if I want to use the same formula over here, it has to be a member. So I'm going to put it in here. It is operator plus, okay? And then the right operand, I want to add an integer to num, let's say. I can put over here int uh, right operand. And what it returns, let's say we want, if we want to return a num, I'm going to put a num. If you want to return an integer, you're going to put an integer. Whatever you want it to return. So in here, I'm going to say num. It means it's going to return a number. So, uh, and plus 
I plus in between two integers doesn't have a side effect because it doesn't have a side effect I do not want it to change the left operand so I'm gonna make it a const uh, I'm gonna so I'm gonna, and I'm gonna men mention over here make it get const um, I'm gonna say const to make sure it does not have side effect which is essentially means it will not change this it will not modify this so that will be operator plus if I wanted to so if my if in my program I have something like this uh, for example I have num m and I have m is equal to n plus 20 plus 20 this operator will take care of it because the left one is a num the right one is an integer as you see and it returns a num at left are we okay with this uh, professor yes should we also make the right operand const too because Which, we're not changing it is by value if it was reference if it was this yes Okay. Got it. Okay. Well, but if it's not reference, it's a copy. Who cares? Change it. Got it. Beautiful okay. question, you. though. So let's 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 do it. Let's say let's say I have this now. And let's say I have. I want to have something like S is equal to M plus N. If I want to write something like this. So the plus is here and I want it to be a member operator. I have to call it operator plus and then at right side I'm receiving another num because it's a class I pass it by reference therefore I've got to say num reference and I'm going to make sure it's const so it doesn't have side effect. Now it becomes the right operand and obviously that's const too and it returns uh, a num by value so it's going to change it so so now as you see that const that you said is applied over here because the reference is passed are we okay with that Peter all right so binary helper operators um, how do I create a binary helper operator which is a, a standalone operator if I want to stand, uh, have a standalone operator, I want the operator um, to work. Uh, so you will see that people create bind, uh, um, uh, helper operators when they are not really needed. So as you see, I did plus like this, so I can do a minus exactly the same way. And the code for it is pretty simple too. So if I want to write the code for the right operand, I'm just going to say num. And in here, I'm going to say uh, the value of this object. So in here, I'm going to say m value plus right operand. Peter, do you, uh, yes. you asked for the temporary nameless objects, right? Yes. This is a perfect place for it. You see that? Right. Okay. Because. We're not we're not like a we we want to create the original values. So 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 we could have done this. We could have said over here num result and then return the result. Correct. Right. Why do I do that? Uh, Why do I create an extra object? I can just simply say create a temporary nameless object and return it because you're going to kill okay. it anyway. So that's where temporary nameless objects are good. When returning by value, objects by value. Temp nameless objects are okay. Because I am I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna um, it's gonna get killed anyway who cares okay so that's the plus that I did and the other one too so 
uh, creating the other one, the, the, the code for the other one. Uh, it's the exact same thing. So in here, I'm going to say uh, m value plus write operands dot m value and return it. So now the plus operator is going to work. As you see, operator overload is pretty simple and straightforward. Now in here, I can say m dot display and l and s dot display and l and it shows all the values and we're going to have the things created so we can see. So so now I have two and then 200, 200 and 220 and 420 so it is actually going somewhere. Uh, are we okay down to this point? Now creating, creating um, a helper binary operator, creating a helper binary operator. How do I do that? How do I create a helper binary operator? So if I want to do that, if I want to create a helper binary operator, I need to come out of the class because it's not a member anymore. So if I want to write a binary helper operator, this is what is it good for? Take a look. What if I want to say over here, for example, if I have over here integer i or integer v, some value, I want to say v is equal to, I don't know, 1400 minus n. If I want to do something like this, if I want to reduce 1400, that is an integer, with the value inside it, by the value inside n, then this negative, this minus cannot be a member of a primitive value. Because of that, it is impossible to make this as a member since member is impossible, impossible, helpers are okay. So now if I want to actually create this, I'm going to go by this rule, which is creating, in here I'm going to say uh, operator, operator, I'm going to put minus, then at the left side I have an integer, so I'm going to say int left operand, operand, at right side I have a number, I don't want to change it, no side effects, so const num reference right operand, and what it returns is a regular integer. So what it returns is just a regular integer. So in here, I'm going to make it an int. Now, as you see, that is gone. And to implement this, did I? Now, implementing is pretty simple. Again, it's a standalone function. It doesn't belong to anyone. In here, I'm going to say return, return, return a left operand, operand minus right operand point. What do I do? I don't have access to the value of right operand. So how do I fix this thing? Can anybody tell me? I can't do this. I can't I can't access it because this is not a member of num. I cannot access the value of this. What do I do? Like a okay. user helper function? Yeah, we can uh, uh, a query function, not a helper function a query function. I can add a query function over here, something like value. I can create int value, okay? And this va and it's a constant. It's not going to change anything, so it's secure and nice. All I need to do in here to return the value. So in here, I'm going to say return value, m value. So now I have a query for it, a constant query. Queries are always constant because you're not supposed to change. Now I can implement over here and say value. So now it will actually work. Now it will actually work. And in here I can actually say C out V. 
and as you will see the value of V will be 1200 because it's reduced by the value of of that one are we okay with this now I have a question ladies and gentlemen okay I have a question ladies and gentlemen and I want everybody's attention over here I want everybody's attention um, and what I will do over here I'm gonna save this num.h over here alt f a and I'm gonna save this as and I'm gonna have the number that CPP oh wow and I'm gonna have this one as bad number two to teach you something okay before doing that I need to have a quest I need to ask a question I'm gonna ask you a life question <laughs> I wanna ask you a question about um, uh, a kind of a philosophical question the question is this answer it so if somebody asks you what would you answer to this question what are friends for so what is for the very short answer if you want to say if somebody asks you hey what is a friend good for in life what would you say help each other good a company enhance the quality of life beautiful support keep going shall having your back beautiful exactly <laughs> we are social animals true that's very true so none of these things that you mention over here are negative comments do we agree that friends are good things in life a friend always helps you a friend is a good thing in life are we are we okay with this all right now now let me explain to you what are friends for in object orientation and I want you to listen to me do I have everybody's attention do I have everybody's attention? All right. Friends in object orientation are for knife in the back. They are awful things. There are no such thing as friends in object orientation. Friends don't exist. We don't have anything called friendship. You call it friendship but it's actually ownership if you say somebody is my friend that literally means they are your owner and they have your life in their hands it's exactly what you talk what you say about a dog being your friend in real life you say my dog is my friend they are not your friends you own them you can take them to the vet and put them down anytime you want how what kind of a friend are you that you can kill your dog anytime you want I know it's harsh I have a dog I love my dog but that's true I own it it I treat it like my friend because I'm a noble person but just because I'm a noble person friends in object orientation are ownership and they have to be avoided at all times if you see a friend and it's not because of owner sometimes you want to apply ownership you have one object you want another object to own this if that's the case you create a friend but if you use a friend just to give access that's bad it's as if you give the key of your house to your best friend you go for a trip you come back and you see your gold necklace is missing the very first thing you're gonna think was my friend the thief that's the first thing so you shouldn't do that 
ever, ever. So that's why I called it bad num over here. Instead of creating a query over here and giving access to value, we could have done it like this. So to give the right hand uh, to right operand over here access to the name to the value what i could do is this i could actually take the signature of this class of this uh, uh, function bring it inside num and say friend and do it like that so now that int operator function that is not a member of my class have access to all guts of my class it can do anything it wants without me knowing it and that's a bad thing yuck yuck awful 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 thing to do do not use friends unless you have to friend functions don't make sense and they are bad, bad design. Design. Soon you will find out what a friend is for when the time comes. But you will see that in, in, the, in the book it's telling it. And sometimes professors create workshops and they ask you to create a, a friend function. And they call it a helper function. It's a friend. Bad thing. Remember, bad thing. Do we understand it? Okay, so that's the example for it, but again, don't use it, yuck, yuck, awful thing to do. So, helper functions, I said that one reason for creating a helper function is, not the container, one reason for creating a helper function is there is that at left side you have a primitive type and because you have a primitive type it cannot accept the member therefore I need to create a helper function um, are we okay with this do we did we understand this another case scenario that you actually need to create a, a helper function a helper operator a helper helper operator overload or a function but they are the same operator overload is a function but it to actually uh, to create a helper function is when you do not have access to the source code of the class that is involved in it now let's come back over here in prg.cpp all the displays that i have over here as you see i want them to be done like a regular display with c out so in here i like to have c out n and l i want to have that i don't want to say c out display and the same thing over here so in here i want to say c out m and l and c out s and l now that i have these i have a binary operator that i need to overload C out is not uh, a primitive type, it's a class, but the class is Ostry. It's inside the library of C++. I cannot change it. So I can't access it. Because of that, now I have to use the exact same formula that I had and overload a helper function to help me print that number without actually uh, uh, calling the display function directly so what I need to do over here is this to take a look and see what the uh, signature of the operator is and create it so what is the right hand what is the right hand operand of this insertion operator over here what is the type of the right hand operator please tell me right hand right right hand not left right hand <laughs> yes num right hand it's num it's a class of course it's a class but it's a num okay so right one is the num and what is the left hand type of this so when i look at this when i look at this what is the type of the left hand operate left hand operand what is the type of left hand operand <laughs> It is an O stream 
Ah, oh, perfect. It's an O stream. Perfectly correct. It is an O stream. And many people said O stream reference. That's very fine too. That's very fine. O stream reference. Good. So that's that's what we're gonna do. So I'm gonna create the operator. Operator. It's insertion. At left side I have O stream reference. I cannot make it constant because action of O stream being printed <coughs> actually changes the C out the, the object. The cursor moves and stuff like that. Though because because of that, you cannot make it a constant. And obviously, because it is inside my header file, I have to qualify it with the namespace. So, O stream, and I'm gonna call it over here left operand. And at right side, I have constant num reference right operand. Operand. Okay. And when I look at my operator at left, what does it need to return? For this thing to continue to work, for end L to be able to get printed, the result of this thing should be C out end L, which means this operator over here, if I actually do it like this, for the, for the C out to work, for the C out to work, the result of this should be a C out. So end L can be printed afterwards. Does that make sense, people? All right, so because of that, I have to return that C out. Therefore, what I will do over here will be first clearing that out. What I will do over here is to actually return an O stream reference. And I can, and as you see, all the errors are gone. So let's implement it. To implement that O stream, I already have a display that works perfectly for it. So what I need to do over here is to say return the display of right hand. So right hand operator, which is a num dot display and I'm gonna pass the left operand to it so essentially so essentially the O stream object comes and passes through my display displaying everything and returning out and this operator insertion operator overload simply works as a mediator for me calling the display and uh, now when I actually run the code you will see that everything's gonna get displayed perfectly I'm just gonna put a stop sign over here and walk through it so you can see what is it going to be. Just a second. All right. So I'm going to go on uh, and, and run it. So it's going to run. One, two, two three, three, four. four. Sorry, I pressed F5 and I got disconnected and I came back. Somebody said, rest in peace. <laughs> what was that? <laughs> All right. Uh, <laughs> All right. So I pressed F5 by mistake. I'm going to, uh, let me just go back in here. <laughs> um, All right. So I'm going to press F5. There you go. Oh, we need the screen. So I pressed F5. You can see the screen, right? All right, so so it comes to here and it wants to print C, uh, N with C out. It doesn't know how. It looks to see if any operator is overloaded. It says, yes, it goes right in here. It goes right in here. And therefore, it calls the operator. So when the operator is being called, let me just... Uh, bring it up over here so we can actually see what is being called and when so when c out n was was getting to be, it was uh, compiler was trying to execute it it couldn't find it therefore it says let me see if there is an operator overloaded for it and it sees there is at left operand it's going to pass c out so left uh, left operand will be reference of c out right hand operator will be ref reference of n and it comes right into it. And when we look at, we'll see that it's N with 200, and this is actually C out. 
then it passes C out to the display so C out will be passed to the display of uh, right hand operator which is num so it comes over here this is the exact same C out that it was it's the reference for it and in here I'm saying C out I'm a bad boy so it's C out ref actually so I'm gonna display the object using the C out reference which is C out it doesn't make any difference so it's gonna actually uh, display uh, display the value as you see it says uh, 200 then it returns the reference of C out, which gets returned again by operator equal coming back over here, making it possible for end L to get printed and therefore it goes to new line. And our operator uh, insertion operator is overloaded. So if you are overloading a binary operator, the only reason you need to do that to, to make it a helper is either the left side is a primitive type, you cannot access the content, or the left class is not accessible because it's a, it's a library thing. Other than that, everything can be a member, so only do member unless they ask you to do so in a workshop on purpose to see if you can do it or not, but that's uh, the case. There is no other need for it. Are we okay with this? For that, I have a question. Yes, go ahead. Uh, yeah, about the insertion operator. Uh, why do we need to um, uh, make the insertion operator overloading? For example, uh, I just uh, got confused about this part. For example, we declare an integer like integer a is uh, equal to 10, and I say C out a. And it and, prints it. And yeah 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 why it comes to n and we need to make the uh, insertion operator overloading i'm surprised you're asking that question how the devil it's supposed to know what is n how does c out know what is n to print it you just created it how does it know what's inside how does it know what to print Maybe the num that I have, I want to, it has two values in there. Let's say I have over here int value and I have over here int base. How, do you, how does it know what to print? Maybe the object is an employee. It has 500 different information here in it. How does it know what is the format of it to get printed? You follow what I'm saying? How can uh, yeah. C how can C out possibly know what inside N needs to be printed? Oh, okay, yeah. Because N is a custom made class and type, N C out has no idea what it is. Quite frankly, if you actually look at the code of O stream, you will see that this operator is overloaded several times inside, so makes the C out understand what is an integer to print. So when you do this and C out actually prints an integer, inside O stream there is an operator overload for the insertion operator and an integer to print it. Got it? Am I yes. Making? Okay. And I'm yeah. going to explain that in a better way in, in, in two seconds. Okay. So, yeah. So other operator overloads, like how can I actually, like, for example, a unary operator, like, for example, if I want to know if the value inside in here is zero or not. So I want to say if it's, Let's say I want to, uh, I'm going to do a unary operator. Let's say I want to get the negative value out, out of num if I want to. I want to get the minus thingy out. So in here, what I'm going to do is this. I'm going to say <coughs> uh, num. So, in, uh, so uh, I want to return the negative num. So I'm going to say num operator minus and I'm not going to put anything because I did not put any value in it that becomes a unary operator 
but forget about minus. Let's put something like, uh, let's say um, our number uh, cannot be negative, and I want to uh, have this thing as a safe empty state. So as you see in here, I'm saying integer value 0. So if the value becomes negative, it is invalid. So I'm going to have over here something like bool is empty. And as empty of mine is returning if the number is negative. So in here, I'm going to say if uh, uh, number is negative, I'm going to say um, m value being less than 0. Something like that. Let's say that's, that's my safe empty state for the number. If that's the case, I want the not operator to give me to send true if the number has negative in it. So essentially it becomes like is empty. If I say if I say over here if not n in here I'm gonna say see out n is negative. Let's say I want to do something like that. Okay, so in here I'm going to say is negative. Let's put it like this. Is negative. Okay, so is negative is returning if it's negative or not. I'm not going to say is empty because it doesn't make sense. Is negative. Okay, and I want to see Actually, no, why do I do that? Negative is not a good thing. So if it's zero, I want this to return true. So I can actually test it to see if it's zero or not. Yeah, that's a good idea. Like a Boolean value. Okay, so let's not do that. I'm going to say, I'm going to make it is empty again, or is zero. I just want to make something that kind of makes sense. So is zero over here. And I want not over here to return if it's zero. So not n, it means n is zero, exactly like uh, values that I do for integers. If I want to do that, I create a unary operator, and I'm going to make it a const over here like that, as you see. And this const, because there is no other right-hand operator, this becomes the the operator okay and its prefix so if you do not mention anything it is prefixed by standard now if I come over here I can actually say over here return is zero okay why did I put num over there it's a boolean bool and this one is a boolean all right, so it's re returned the boolean, and now it actually tells me if it's zero or not. So in here, if I if I set the value to zero, so in here I'm going to say uh, num z, and I don't put anything here, it's going to be zero, right? So in here I'm going to say z, and in here I'm going to say the number is zero. So that's a unary variable because it is a unary prefix variable. I simply put operator not and obviously I want to make it constant so when it actually runs and gets to it as you see it comes to the unary operator and prints the uh, uh, if it's going to return is zero which is, <laughs> sorry about that, uh, which returns if it's zero or not. So, and because m value is zero, that is going to return the value of true, which is in return, it's going to say the number of zero. And that is the uh, unary operator for the, for, for not, for example. Or if I want to add one to it, so in here I want to say uh, uh, plus plus z 
or minus minus z. Okay? And then see out z and see out z again. If I want to do that, then I all I need to do is to overload the operator for it. So I will have, uh, it's going to probably return a num. And I'm going to say num in here. Um, and I can actually make it a reference because uh, it is it, it, it has side effect. I can return actually the Z itself. So I'm going to say return operator minus plus plus. It's not a constant because it's changing it. And why am I writing it here? I have no idea. Let's put it in here. So now in here, I'm going to write num operator plus plus and num reference operator minus minus. And I can implement the two. And it simply does m value plus plus and return this and the other one is exactly the same with a minus minus and I'm doing m value minus minus and now as you see the plus plus over here will add one to the value of z and reduce the value of z by one so it's going to be one and zero and it works perfectly so that's prefix operator overloading are we okay with this all right and obviously uh, you know that I could do something like this I could say n is equal to this and n is set to that and it would both work for it perfectly so if I go see out n and see out n I will get the exact same result with absolutely no difference are we okay with this because it returns the reference it gets the value and it's set now the next thing I want to show you that is kinda tricky is this one how do we overload the postfix the only two postfix operators that we have how do we overload those to overload the postfix operators, what I need to do, so essentially I want to have this n is set to z plus plus, and n is set to z minus minus, something like that. So that's that. Okay, so and let's put something in z so i'm going to say z uh, uh, let's uh, use n i'm going to say m is equal to n plus uh, n is changed uh, what do i do what do i do i'm going to say m is equal to n n is equal to m plus plus and uh, n is equal to m minus minus okay to overload these two operators what you need to do is to do a freaky thing okay what is the freaky thing the freaky thing is that you are supposed to because the because it's the unary operator you don't have a left and right and because there is no left and right they came up with a weird syntax so you write the exact same thing that you've done but you do you put an int inside here this int doesn't mean anything it is not an argument int is not an argument it it is a flag to indicate uh, plus plus is postfix that's all so don't think that it is it is actually don't think that it's actually uh, an argument over there this int over here just says that's postfix so when I actually 
run it when I create it I'm gonna actually go to the code over here and just copy those and put it right over here and I just put an int in here that's all int and int so when you look at this when he comes just just remember because it's postfix necessarily it's not going to work exactly like in in C lang in C so if you remember in C when we run this in C when plus plus comes after the variable it happens after that's not going to happen over here it's just the function call so if I actually uh, go in here so M has the value 220 so it goes in here <coughs> changes the value of uh, 220 to 221 and returns the value and L n will be 220 I don't know why I'm printing Z but n will be 220 it's not gonna change it's not gonna be one less or more so, uh, so it is not going to actually work like uh, it did for the uh, for the for plus plus and minus minus that happen after so if I run this one too you will see that absolutely no difference it comes in here value becomes 220 again it comes back in and n is 220 exactly as m it was so no difference uh, do we understand this because it's an overload it's not gonna act the same way as plus plus it actually if you want that to happen you have to program it that way so if I want plus plus to look like that it happened after I have to play a trick in here what I need to do for that trick is to say instead of actually uh, returning a number I'm gonna return something fake I'm gonna say in here uh, I'm gonna say in here <coughs> it returns a value and this plus plus of mine so I'm gonna do it like that so I'm not going to return the same value. I'm just going to return something else. I'm going to fake it. In here, I'm going to say num ret is equal to this, or I'm going to say previous or old. Okay? And instead of this, I'm going to return the old one. So now I'm kind of faking it. I'm going to say uh, get the value that we had over here, and keep it somewhere before you add one to the value and return the old value now if I take a look at it my plus plus actually so I'm gonna say to make it work to make it work like plus plus with int to make it work like that I'm holding the old value and returning that one instead so now if I come to this uh, to this line what happens is that the plus plus of the plus plus of mine uh, will get caught it's gonna hold the old value over here so it's gonna remain 220 adds that one to 221 so the value of mine change but it returns the old value out and therefore n will be 220 so as you see <laughs> so but that's only faking it if you look at mi minus minus it's gonna work exactly the same way like the other one um, which means they are both 220 if you want minus to work the same way you have to again not return the reference out keep it old value and return the old value instead are we okay down to this point all right this was all about operator overloading down to this point but we have many more overloading to come uh, so this is just operator overloading that I've done but there are so many different things that you can overload uh, the, uh, operators that you don't know even they are operators uh, will come to it and we'll find out um, any questions down to this point yes James I can't hear you your microphone doesn't work the microphone doesn't work microphone doesn't work okay I'm sorry professor do you mind just uploading uh, these notes after the lecture please let me just do it right now before we forget I'm gonna Thank say you so much. no problem <clears throat> so and I want you to confirm it that it's there so I don't want it to make a boo-boo again so I'm gonna say commit and push all uh, 
Peter, could you please confirm that it's up there? Yep, it's there now. Okay, perfect. And I'm going to immediately upload the, the YouTube after it's done, so to make sure that it's there. We're gonna, we have a missing one that we're going to uh, post that one afterwards too, uh, the missing lecture. So uh, cool. uh, have yourself a beautiful day. It's 1.32. We are actually past our time, so we got to go. Um, I'll see you in class. Have a beautiful day, everyone. Bye. Thanks, Professor. Bye.